the college basketball experience, Virginia tech Hokies, 2022, 23 season preview episode on the sports gambling podcast networks presented by win bet, bet a hundred dollars at win bet and get a hundred dollar free bet. Head over to sports gambling podcast.com slash win bet that sports gambling podcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bet today. What's up everybody. This is Cameron Kroeg from Loyola Chicago Ramblers. And you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Shout out to the broad stop. Thank you guys. Yes, yes, yes. Woo! Welcome. Welcome to the college basketball experience. Virginia Tech Hokies 2022 season preview episode. Gobble, gobble. That's my hokey imitation right there. If you're wondering who the hell you're listening to, my name is Colby Swing and Database Dad, aka Pick. Don D. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists, and lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. I smoke and I drink and um, I don't have stress and I'm healthy. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Talking hokey hoops. Let's go to Blacksburg, folks. Remember to subscribe to the college basketball experience as we talk college basketball year round here. And I am honored to have on this guy, host of the NFL Gambling Podcast. But if you listen to us last year with the college basketball experience, I gave you an episode every single game of the or every single day of the college basketball season. And uh, you're going to, you're going to be uh, hearing this guy a lot. Uh, but like I said, he hosts the NFL gambling podcast. He does a lot of work at NBA gambling podcast. So give it up for my guy, Ryan McIntyre. How you doing, Ryan? It's going good, Colby. I think it's fitting that we're going to talk some uh, hokey basketball on the same week that we're going to get West Virginia, Virginia tech football Thursday night in Blacksburg. So yeah, well, let's talk some hokey hoops. Yeah, let's talk some hokey hoops. If you don't know, folks, Ryan McIntyre, a WVU graduate, you know, for a long time, these teams resided in the Big East, and they were, it's a strong rivalry. The Thursday night college football games are for West Virginia, Virginia Tech. I've been to a Thursday night game in Blacksburg. Always awesome. Subscribe to the college football experience because we're going to have you covering that uh, as, as these two teams, whenever they play. It doesn't matter if it's badminton, I'm sure it's a fucking rivalry. So, uh, anyway, here we are talking Hokies hoops and you know, you look at, I think everyone started to panic. I, you know, I, I grew up in the area. You grew up in the, in the area, meaning like the DC Virginia area and all my Hokie friends, when Buzz Williams left for Texas A&M, they said, Oh man, that's brutal. We, you know, we had our first six, sweet 16. Um, you know, we really thought this program was heading the right direction. And then they hired Mike young. And I remember everyone being like who, but I knew about Mike young. Because if you watch Wofford basketball, this guy was legit. He was a very good coach. I mean, you, you look at, and it took a while to get started at Wofford. If you go through his history, you know, I think he had a uh, 500 or below seasons in like his first six years, I believe, but they were patient with him. And around 2008, 2009, he started to turn that corner. And all of a sudden, you know, he kind of turned Wofford into a seriously good mid major. And you know, this, I thought the hire made sense. Cause he's from, he's from right up the road from, from Virginia tech and first year, 16 and 16, just seven and 13 in the ACC. My Virginia tech fans were saying, ah, see regression. But then the past two years, they made the NCAA tournament, uh, including last year, winning the ACC uh, tournament. So wh- what do you make of old Mike young? So year four, Mike young uh, went to the tournament, his second and third year of Virginia tech now and they were panicking late in January last year when they were 10 and 10 overall, two and seven in the ACC, but then caught complete fire down the stretch. Uh, when in what was it, 13 out of like 16, including that ACC run where they beat Duke and Carolina in the semis and finals back to back, made a lot of shots, obviously, finishing third in the country in three point percentage last year. So, uh, 
Yeah, no, I like I like I loved the Mike Young hire at the time. His teams at Wofford were fun, and they he's got a different brand of basketball, and it's it's fit well in Blacksburg. Yeah, and I, I think you know this is going to be a very interesting year because I mean, first off, I can't uh, that that was their first ever ACC tournament championship. So kudos there. Now I get it in the tournament, two first round losses, probably, you know, fans probably saying, Oh, we should be better than that. I get it. But you still made the tournament two out of three years. Mm -hmm. And, and I I think it's coming, give it some time. Um, Because even with buzz, you you look back at the years with, with buzz, uh, they didn't, it's not like uh, besides that one sweet 16 run that they, they had their problems in the first round too. Buzz Williams actually out of being there five years, he went to the tournament three times, but he lost two times in the first round and then uh, didn't make the tournament the other two years. So patience, patience. I think Mike Young's a good coach and I'm excited to see what he does with this year's team. As we, we load up the stats here and look at uh, reflect on last year a little bit. Um, first off, you know, they were 23 and 13 overall uh, hit ATS. They were just 53%. So, you know, we kind of liked them here. Sports gambling podcast network. All right. Kind of liked them. I know real money. Kramer's going to be tuning into this episode, trying to find out about his Hokies. Um, but you look at adjusted offense 17th in the nation. The guy can coach offense. The guy can coach offense. I knew when he got storm Murphy, by the way, who played with him at Wofford and same with key Valuma. I knew that. Okay. I thought this, this, this team had potential. If anything, I was a little disappointed early in the year, but as they came together late, I was like, this is what I was kind of envisioning. Um, 17th in the nation adjusted offense, 54th in the nation adjusted defense. That speaks volumes to, in my opinion, on the coaching. Uh, Also they shot 75% from the free throw line. That is 67th in the nation. Um, Defensive rebounding ninth in the nation. I mean, you look at this and that, you know what that tells me is this is an extremely well coached team and they're, they're f- fundamentally sound. I mean, third in the nation is shooting the three. What do you make of that team last year? And you look at their pace. I mean, they're 340th in pace. It, it tells me that they're very precise on offense and they're going to run their stuff. Um, and, and they know who the go-to guys are. Um, at, at Wofford, obviously, it was Fletcher McGee, and he runs a lot of unique sets that gets gets these shooters open looks, and that's that's why they finished third in the country from uh, three, and then at the free throw line, seventy five percent. So he he really is a heck of a coach, Mike Young. Yeah, and I think this year is going to be the most interesting year to see how he you know he was he was able to get Kiva Luma, which I know I feel like no Power Five schools were like probably interested in him and then you saw him ball out in Blacksburg. Um, but they did lose a, a bunch of key players. You look at uh, Aluma who, you know, averaged 10.6 boards a season ago. I think he even had better stat line this junior year. Um, uh, they also lose uh, storm Murphy. Like I said, the two that had tons of continuity uh, with coach young. Uh, they also lost Naheem uh, Aline to to UConn. That was a that was a brutal loss. I, when I mm-hmm. first saw it, I said, "Ooh, ooh!" You know, the transfer portal's batshit crazy in 2022. But I I didn't see that one coming. As Danny Hurley reaches down into Blacksburg and takes a uh, you know one of their better players from a season ago. They also lost uh, a couple other transfers that are kind of deep on that bench. In uh, David, uh, I always butcher this guy's pronunciation. And and Gasson. Uh, to yeah, Kansas sure. State, and uh, then the center uh, Alaco to uh, to George Mason. Uh, I'm probably butchering all those names. I don't give a shit. Okay, let's go. Um, but re- replacing those three, Aluma, Aline, and Storm, I think you know you kind of say we're, we're looking at a, at a lot of regression coming into the season. What do you think? Uh, I don't think as much as people think because they're bringing in a good amount of transfers as well. But I mean, the million dollar question with all the transfer portal uh, guys going in and out, how are these guys going to mesh with one another? So, I mean, they bring in uh, Basil from Wright state Camden from Memphis and petite from rice. So they're bringing in some size and length and some, some big guys that can make some shots. Yeah. Yeah. And Basil or Basili, I've heard like 20 different announcers say both different things. So I'm, I'm, that's always the best is when you watch ESPN and one, one day they're pronouncing the name that way, the next game, a different announcer pronouncing a different way. So it it makes (laughs) you feel better about me mispronouncing all these names, but, but yes, obviously that would like, he was a baller. I watched a game of his 
uh, at Wright State. I think they were playing NC State last year, where he lit it up. He lit it up like he really like had a. I think it was like twenty seven points or twenty five points or something. Six nine forward. That would be a, that could be someone that could really fit in well in, in Young's office. Then obviously, like you 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 alluded to, so many different transfers. Uh, you know, Camden coming in from Memphis, Poteet coming in from Rice. Uh, the, where the Owls, I actually kind of liked what, what Rice had on the court uh, last last season. So um, we're going to talk some of the freshmen that they're bringing in. But first, folks, I got to get us paid. I want to tell you that the college basketball experience, Virginia Tech Hokies 2022-23 season preview episodes brought to you by WinBet. Bet $100 at WinBet and get a $100 free bet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W-Y-N-N-B-E-T to claim your free bet today. We're also brought to you by Fubo TV. If you watch football, you need Fubo TV. Fubo TV gives you complete coverage of college and pro football. You got you. They'll get you NFL red zone plus games in 4k at no extra charge. There's over a hundred channels of live sports and entertainment for a fraction of the price of cable. You can watch it on all your devices. Never miss an episode or of your favorite uh, TV shows. Or, you know, if you're, if you're working, you can record the game because they have uh, included c- cloud-based DVR. There's no contract. There's no commitment. You can cancel it at any time. Right now, you can try Fubo TV for free for seven days and get 15% off your first month. Just go to FuboTV.com slash SGP. That's F-U-B-O-T-V.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by Odds Trader. Yes, Odds Trader is a place to compare odds from all the major sports books. You can also compare the different sign-up codes and promo codes from sportsbook to sportsbook to assure that you get the best deal possible. And one of my favorite things is it is a bet tracker. Uh, so betters can keep records of all your games and betting activity because you get me, you get me deep into the, into the, the, like Christmas and Thanksgiving. It's crazy for me. All right. Like I'm forgetting checking my account. Oh, I lost this. Oh, I hit this. I don't even remember betting that because you know, you got NFL, you got NBA, you got NHL, you got the, uh, you know, college football, college basketball. You got the fucking gray cup. I, I'm no stranger to betting on the gray cup in the Canadian football league. All right. And then this year we got the world cup and then you, you traditionally you'll get like a UFC fight or a, or a boxing fight. And you throw all that together, man. And I don't know about you, but I am unorganized on like, Oh shit. Uh, did I bet that two weeks ago? I don't remember that. I had a few, I had a few, you know, whiskeys. Maybe I did bet that, you know, this is going to organize it for you. Remind you what's going on here. So check it out. Go to oddstrader.com slash blue wire odds trader, the number one site for all your game day bets. All right. Uh, I want to talk about this because Virginia tech, uh, bringing in some, some recruits and I'm curious how this will work out young. I feel like has always had experienced players. Uh, I, I feel like, will he, w- the question coming into the season is how much PT will we see from these guys? But he did land. So he's bringing in four freshmen. Three of them were top 200 recruits. Uh, that is six, four guard Rodney rice from Hyattsville, Maryland and uh seven foot center, Patrick Wessler number 150 recruit from Charlotte, North Carolina. Also bringing in a six, four guard MJ Collins from rock Hill, South Carolina, number one eighty two recruit, but Rodney rice, 67th recruit. I mean, you add those three and they also bring in six, seven forward Darren Buchanan from Washington, DC. And uh, it's going to be an interesting roster that we see there in Blacksburg. How much playing time do you think? I mean, I would assume rice, the 67th recruit in the nation, probably going to get some serious burn despite Mike young. I traditionally feel like plays a lot of the upperclassmen. What do you think? Yeah, uh, Rice is out of Dematha, so uh, historical. My, my father's, my yep. father's alma mater. Yes, yeah. uh, Morgan Wooden, baby. So yeah, uh, my yeah, fa- no, my... the the Stangs. Yeah, my father got cut by Morgan Wooten, but hey, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay, Coach Wooten. <laughs> Rest in peace. I, I was gonna say that's not a that's not a bad thing. They've had a lot of great <laughs> players go through Dematha, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, Rice should contribute right away. If anything, they're with the uh, bringing in these transfers at the Ford and big man positions, there is some opportunity for playing time at the guard position. So I, I anticipate Rice contributing right away, especially being a Dematha kid. And then Wessler, I'm sure, will sit behind uh, Basil, Batid, and Mutz in the front court and, and learn from those guys. Because like you said, Mike Young likes to groom those younger guys behind the vets. Yeah. And, and, you know, you look at this projected starting five that we, we, we put together and, you know, I see, okay, you got, you got, well, first off returning Couture is huge. Returning Couture is huge. He had a great ACC tournament. I feel like 
So he's back senior guard, 10 point shot, 42% from three. 42% from three. I mean, I feel like half of, uh, I don't know, Memphis's roster can't shoot 42% from the free throw line. Um, then you have uh you know, six, seven forward. Justin Mutz is back. Mutz was a key player from a season ago. So if we had to project the starting five, I think we go Sean Padula at the one uh, Hunter Couture at the two uh, six, five junior Darius Maddox, who was six points a game, 50% from three at the three and then Justin Mutz at the four, 10.7 boards. And then, like you said, Grant Basile, uh, the right state transfer 18 points and nine boards there in the, uh, with right state there. What are they horizon in the horizon league? So yep. uh, what do you make of that's a pretty good starting five when you actually think about it. Cause, and then when you, when you factor in that you're saying, okay, well then you could also see some of the freshmen on the bench. Maybe you get some, some, some good minutes from Rodney rice. I like that Poteet transfer from, 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 Rice University, um, and then who knows what forward John Camden? I think he he remains kind of a question mark that we're all kind of interested in seeing because Memphis not, transfer from Memphis. You know one thing: you had to be talented to go to the University of Memphis to play basketball there. So, uh, what do you make of that overall? The starting five, though, I think it, it, this is kind of a mystery team in the ACC, right? Yeah, and uh, I think Mike Young's going to like this team because I think they're going to be able to make shots from all five positions because Basili can step out and and shoot the three as well. Um, like you said, uh, Camden from Memphis, he was a four-star kid coming into high school. He just, I mean, there's just a lot of guys on the, in that Memphis program that are talented. He didn't, he didn't get his opportunity, but, uh, yeah, no, this is definitely a dark horse, interesting, uh, Virginia tech Hokie team coming into, into this year. Yeah, I, I'm very intrigued. And it's funny with doing these team previews. I feel like, you know, where I'm trying to, to break down the tiers that I have in the ACC. And <clears throat> this is one where I probably think after doing this right now and after reading these notes prior to today's episode, I'm sitting there saying, maybe I think they're going to be better than what I thought they would be when I did some of those other episodes when I was previewing Boston College. I said, hey, that's a winnable game potentially against <laughs> Virginia Tech. Now I'm like, ah, let me pump the brakes on that a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk schedule and expectations in a, uh, in a, uh, you know, 2022 and 2023 is once again, the season tips uh, on, on November 7th. Uh, but before I do that, I got to get us paid against football season. There's a lot of sponsors folks. So bear with us as, uh, as uh, I guess it's a good problem to have, but at the same time, I can understand from the listening side of this, you're saying dude, this guy's just spat every company you could ever think of. Uh, look, I want to tell you folks, the college football experience is brought to you by no house advantage. Yes. No house advantage is changing the game by offering the most dynamic fantasy sports platform available today. They play You can play in pick them contests versus other people for a shot at winning 250 K in cash. Look, it's 2022. The thought I've always watched plenty like uh, shit. The other day I was watching casino. I think it was all right. Joe Pesci, classic flick. I've always wanted to have just a, just a, just a briefcase full of cash. All right. So when I see 250 K in cash, I don't know how the hell they're paying you that, but I signed me up for, for, for trying to get that because yes, I'd probably be paranoid, probably be checking the windows every couple minutes thinking, Hey, who's coming to get me, but 250 K in cash, uh, download the app, choose a, choose a contest, select your player props, earn points for corrected picks and climb the leaderboard for your shot to win big money every single day. You can also test your skills against the house and win up to 20 times your entry. If you hit all your picks uh, and they don't have this just only for NFL. They also have it for, for NBA, MLB, PGA, MMA, NASCAR. So check it out. Sign up now with the promo code SGPN at nohouseadvantage.com or download the app to get the first deposit match up to $25. We're also brought to you by promoguide.us. Promoguide.us is the best place if you're interested in plus EV betting strategies. Yes. Um, I got to say, we've been looking at their daily promo updates and they have some of the best, some of the most informative in the game. Uh, they, they, they won't necessarily tell you, you know, what team is probable to win or what team they like there, but they'll get, they'll, they'll tell you where the best odds are, how to track down uh, and cash in big on constantly changing promotions. So check out promoguide.us and check out their 100% tracked, transparent, and proven method for betting smarter. So make sure you check out promoguide.us. We're also brought to you by Sleeper. Sleeper is the fastest growing fantasy platform today with millions of players. You probably already have a fantasy league on there. I know I do. It is a game-changing product unlike anything else in the industry. And now you can win big on Sleeper by playing their brand new over-under game. 
And let me tell you back to March madness last year, I was playing the over under game. And I really think there's a lot of value in the college athletics world with sleeper. Um, even with NFL and stuff, if you know your shit or NBA get in there because the over under on props, absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, they give you a lot of stuff that I can't find anywhere else. So, so folks uh, on your mobile phone, join our listener group on sleeper at sleeper.com slash SGP and sleeper will automatically match your first deposit up to a hundred dollars. That's promo code SGP. Once again, sleeper.com slash SGP and you'll get a hundred dollar match on your first deposit terms and conditions apply. See sleepers terms of use for details. All right. We are back talking Virginia tech hokey hoops. Uh, I cannot wait for the season. And uh, look, uh, as, as this season gets ready to tip off, I'm going to highlight, this is the best part about doing it this late. You know, I was starting these previous series mid at mid August. I didn't have a fucking schedule. Now I can, I actually have the whole schedule here. Um, so shout out to, uh, to Virginia tech and the ACC for figuring that out in the past couple of weeks. I actually hope they get it earlier next year, but uh, I I'm looking at the schedule out the gate. They get Delaware state. That's going to be, that's, I feel like the first week, Delaware state, then they go, they get Lehigh. These are all in Blacksburg at Cassell Coliseum. Uh, that the house that Ace Custis built. Um, then they get William and Mary. Now, when they go to the Shriners children's classic in Charleston, South Carolina, love Charleston. Great city, by the way. Great. Place. Um, oh my God. I need to move there at some point in my life. Just give me <laughs> cocktails and just have me uh yeah, just a great city. If you haven't been to Charleston, get down there. Maybe you're a Hokie fan. Go down there and support your Hokies. Um, ODU, ODU and Jeff Jones. Oh, man, I remember Jeff Jones from the Virginia days. They get, they get ODU in the first round of that. Could there be a potential uh, upset? Cause I will say this. It took the Hokies a little bit last year to get things together. I wonder with all this roster movement, potentially could November early December be a little shaky ground, you know, for, for, for Mike young. Uh, I think that ODU game could be a one to circle as, you know, I, obviously I don't have no idea what the line will be right now, but ODU, I'm just saying Jeff Jones keeps a decent squad. Just a couple of years ago, they made the NCAA tournament lost to Purdue in the first round. If memory serves me correct. Um, but the rest of the field down there in, in Charleston is the university of Charleston. Who's actually not bad as well. Colorado state who I know David Roddy's gone. I, I thought they were one of the, like the funnest teams to watch. I know the mountain West didn't shell out great in the NCAA tournament, but still they're fun to watch uh, up there in Fort Collins. Then you get Davidson life after Bob McKillop that he hands the keys over to his son. They keep a good program there. We'll see how the transition goes with uh, the, the coaching front, but uh, then Furman Penn state and South Carolina. I mean, they should be the favorite to win this thing, right? Yeah, you got some good mid majors in this tournament. Uh, Davidson, Furman, Colorado, Colorado State. State yeah. Yeah, I mean, they were in the NCAA tournament last year. And then you, you already touched on it with Old Dominion. You know, being a Virginia school, that's going to be their Super Bowl. We just saw it in football a couple weeks back yeah. when they beat yeah. the Hokies. So maybe they beat them in basketball a couple months later. But uh, this is a great tournament because I yeah. honestly think if you were to set the odds on this thing, I, I mean, I, you might want to put Colorado state as the odds on favorite base or them or Virginia tech as the odds on favorite, but Furman Furman lost on that crazy shot in the SoCon championship last year, or they would have been in the NCAA tournament. I mean, I, I don't know if you folks remember this, but uh, they were taking on, why am I drawing a blank? But the guy hit a, like a, a runner, two steps. It was a Chattanooga. Chattanooga. Yeah. Chattanooga. Yeah. And yeah. Then they should have beat Illinois. Yeah. I mean, so that Furman is a very good school. Obviously Davidson keeps a good program. They made the NCAA tournament. So, I mean, I think best case scenario though, if you're a Virginia tech fan, you're saying, Hey, I think we could win this tournament and pick up some great wins against potential tournament teams come March. You know, I, I do think Colorado state is going to be a tournament team this year. I don't know. I can't say the same about, you know, a lot of the other ones. I think the SoCon is too tough to say, well, Furman's definitely going to be a tournament team because they normally only get one bid, even though I feel like it should be two. Uh, Penn State's still in the rebuilding process with Micah Shrewsbury and South Carolina. That's going to be very interesting to watch as they landed the number one recruit in the nation. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just feel like if you're a Hokie fan there, you got to say, hey, we can win this. You know, well, like what, what, what should Hokie fans say is a good, uh, you know, showing? in, in Charleston, at least the championship game, right? 
Yeah, they. I mean, they will be the favorite because of their name and recognition. But I mean, they. It's going to be hard to win that tournament. I think the three high majors. I mean, watch this, out. This is, yeah. a, this is yeah. This is a tough field because you know the mid majors are going to get up to anytime they can pick off a high major. But I mean, if they can go through this tournament and navigate their way successfully, they're going to pick up three top one hundred, top one twenty five wins uh, to go along with their resume down the road. Yeah. And then they come back home. They, they get, they get Charleston Southern. Once again, that should be, an, that should be a win. And then they get uh, the ACC big 10 challenge in Blacksburg. They get the Minnesota golden Gophers who I think, I think Virginia tech should win that game. Although I do think Minnesota Ben Johnson's got that team, I think heading in the right direction, but I think they should win that game. Yeah. Uh, then they, they have the, the random ACC game that they sprinkle in like the first week of December. Unfortunately, Actually, I actually think this is fortunately they get in North Carolina. There's two ways to look at this. You, you So on, on Sunday, December 4th in Blacksburg, they get North Carolina there. I would rather, and I get it. His team might not be in, you know, in full death con mode by that, by that point where he had the season last year, but um, or late last season, he had his team. Uh, but I would argue that to pick up a, a an ACC win here. Like to me, if you're in January or February and you got like North Carolina one day, Virginia, the next and, and wake forest or Duke or Florida state or something, then I think it's harder to prep. Whereas you get this one sprinkled. I get it. You have Minnesota and the ACC big 10 challenge before, but I don't think that's one that, you know, they're the fans are circling or, or the team is circling. Um, I think getting North Carolina alone as that lone ACC game and then bouncing back to your at a conference schedule after that, could be a blessing. Uh, obviously I have North Carolina favored because they return everybody. I think they're my, they're actually my preseason number one to, to, to win it all. Yeah. Um, but what, what do you make of that? You think that that would be, at, would you rather play them now in Blacksburg on December 4th? Or would you rather get that like sandwich between, I don't know, a Duke game or a, uh, you know, a critical ACC game where you're just going up against, you know, b- really good teams back to back in a perfect world. I like to play them after Duke because I know how, much anticipation and hype goes into that game, but I, I'm with you. I like getting them early because I, I think Carolina, I mean, they, they all came back for one reason. That was to win a national championship. So they may like that Florida team uh, years ago, they kind of go through the motions a little bit in the non-con these teams that bring all this talent back. And then they take it to another gear come February and into March for the stretch run. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think and getting them at home, if it was Chapel Hill, then maybe I would say no, 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 no. But I actually think getting all of these at home, getting the Minnesota game at home, getting the North Carolina game at home. And then on December 7th, they have Dayton, Anthony Grant's bunch coming into to Blacksburg by getting those all at home mm. are key. And uh, you know, even if you drop the Carolina game, if you're able to be Dayton, Dayton's a team that I think could be in the NCAA tournament this year. Uh, then you have the, uh, the, the matchups, they go to, uh, to, to the Barkley center up in Brooklyn, New York for the basketball hall of fame invitation, where they're taking on Oklahoma state, Oklahoma state. Uh, it's always hard to tell what they have with their teams. I feel like there's so many transfers going on there. Um, but I think that's somewhat of a winnable game for, for Virginia tech. Would you agree there? Yes. And I mean, that's quite the homestand to have, uh, those three right in a row, right in the middle of December. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually kind of like the way the schedule aligns after the, the, the trip to Brooklyn, they come back home, they get grambling. And then uh, right before Christmas, they head to, to chestnut Hill to take on Boston college. I do expect Boston college to be better, but th- that's a game they should be able to win. And then they have the new year's Eve game in Winston Salem against wake forest. I kind of like how everything aligns for 2022 with Virginia tech. Gonna talk, gonna talk a little bit of 2023, but okay. The last time, l- this is the end. All right, I gotta get us a couple more ads in there. Want to tell you that the Virginia Tech 2022-23 season preview is brought to you by the Elias Game Plan app. Yes, did you know the? Did you know the best day of the week is actually Monday and Thursday and Sunday because it's NFL season. And hey, Ryan McIntyre, host of the NFL Gambling Podcast, so mix that into this mess. Uh, it's our favorite time of year, though. All right. And, and whether you're into fantasy leagues or betting on your team or just talking highlights around the water cooler at work, the NFL season just got a lot better. Thanks to the Elias game plan app, the ultimate sports betting and fantasy companion for the NFL, NBA, and MLB. The Elias game plan app is, is 
not is the only sports app with the uh, from the most trusted name in sports stats. Yes, the Elias Sports Bureau, the official statisticians of U.S. pro sports leagues, including the National Football League. Um, and with this app, you will get tons of stuff: L- L- league validated news, player stats, head-to-head comparisons. Uh, they'll help you with your fantasy football matchups. Um, they give you expert game analysis uh, that, w- that will tell you, you know, the advantage in betting this team or that team. It, it's absolutely phenomenal. You got to check it out. Evaluate the NFL season today and download the Elias Game Plan app. That's E L I A S. And right now, I have a special offer for you. If you do get fifteen percent off your your annual subscription, uh, but only if you use the promo code SGPN fifteen. Once again, find the Elias Game Plan app in the App Store, or Google Play Store, and use that promo code SGPN fifteen. Um, we're also brought to you by run your pool. Yes. Run your pool. VIP is here. People, a brand new subscription service from run your pool that helps you get an extra edge against the books. Plus exclusive access to real money pools. You look, there's entry to week, the week two NFL pool. They're giving away five G's. What are you doing folks? Get in now, as well as the season long pool with a hundred thousand dollar payout folks get in, use the promo code SGPN VIP at runyourpool.com slash VIP and get 50% off your first month of run your pool VIP. That's once again, promo code SGPN VIP at runyourpool.com slash VIP. All right. We are back talking hokey hoops as ACC play. You know, it's always tough to forecast this because you don't know about injuries. You don't know, you know, what, what's going to be going on at this point, but I look at the ACC schedule and I see opportunity. I, and and correct me if I'm wrong, because Ryan, I'm very interested in your thoughts. Here's how I break down the tiers, and I, I sound like a broken record if you listen to other ACC pods. But Carolina is the clear cut to me. No one's on that level in the ACC, mm-hmm. in my opinion. The second tier, I think, is Virginia, Duke. Maybe you squeeze Florida State in there, but I think Virginia and Duke kind of on that second level. The third tier leading with Florida state. Then I think you drop down and say, well, Florida state, Miami, I think is in the mix. I think uh, Louisville is probably going to be in that mix. I think wake forest is in that mix. And I think Virginia tech is right there. And then after that, I would probably have the the remainder. Maybe you throw in, you know, uh, maybe you can talk me into Syracuse because of Bayheim's coaching abilities as the season prolongs. Who knows where they'll be? Maybe NC State if they're healthy, even though life without Manny Bates. Um, but it's really hard for me to to sit here and say, you know, which teams are going to be in the NCAA tournament. I'll just say this: if you're a Virginia Tech fan, I think, I think you have winnable games. Like the key to your success, obviously, is having a winning record in the ACC. If you have a winning record in the ACC, I think you you will have a chance at making the NCAA tournament. But I think you got to take care of business against those schools. And those schools I mentioned in that tier that Virginia Tech's in are super critical games. We expect that they expect you to lose to Virginia and NC State and Duke. And maybe you'll pull off an upset, right? I know Hokie fans are going to be like, we don't expect to lose to Virginia. I'm just telling you, they return everybody. All right. But if you can win some of those critical matchups, when when you go down to Miami and take on Jimmy Laranaga's bunch, when you play uh, Steve Forbes and Wake Forest, um, and then you got to just avoid the, the, the really bad losses. Cause I, I look at certain, you know, teams and I say, well, Pitt and Boston college, I don't know. Uh, you know, Georgia tech, I don't know. Clemson, I don't know, but what do you make? What, what do you make of that? The way I broke down those tiers, would you agree with that? Or is there, would, how would you, how would you like slice up the, the ACC as far as you think it will, will shake out? You know, I actually might even go a step further. I I almost have Virginia on the same level as North Carolina just because of their pedigree. And they seem to, especially in the regular season-wise, they seem to always grind out games. That, like the one year they lost all those non-conference games and they find a way to still win the regular season championship. And it was supposed to be a down year. I know we shouldn't be talking up the Cavaliers on the Virginia <laughs> Tech uh, pod, so everybody's yeah. like, "Fuck this guy!" But uh, uh, yeah, no, but I mean, and you're a WVU guy, man. They're yeah. gonna be sending you DMs. No, I'm joking. Yeah. But anyway, continue yeah. on, continue on. But uh, that was the first thing I when the ACC schedule came out. I was like, when we're looking at Virginia Tech, I'm like, when do the two Virginia games come come on the schedule? Because I mean, you you want to get like Saturday. 
February 4th, you get him in Blacksburg. So, I mean, if Virginia's in the top 10, I mean, that's a that marquee resume win. Um, maybe you get the one against Carolina in December, like we talked about. And then do they get Duke at home again this year too? Because they've they always do. Duke, uh, they yeah. do on January 23rd. And I think one I think of the Monday. best things one of the best things about this schedule is they do not go to Chapel Hill. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I, I, I could totally see Virginia being up there with you with UVA as well. But um I think I actually think like if you like I said, you had asked me a week ago, I kind of had them behind the pack there. Cause I thought they lost so much, but after previewing them and going through the notes all the past couple of days, I'm sitting there like, well, you know what? They're probably going to be better than what I'm thinking uh, previously. And I kind of see them in the mix. And I kind of think like if you throw them in the middle of like between wake forest and NC state, I think they're kind of, I think I, I trust them more than NC state wake forest. Um, I think Miami is probably more talented from an NBA standpoint. I think Florida state's more talented from an NBA standpoint, but it doesn't always, you know, lead to wins in college basketball. So I think they're, they are in that mix. Uh, and those games will be super critical at the end of the day though, is Mike young and Virginia tech dancing in March. I know look, a lot of things can happen. Their leading scorer could get, could tear an ACL. You know, you, you have no idea, but gun to your head right now is Virginia tech dancing in March. Yes, because of Mike Young. I think Mike Young gets this group back to the tournament. Uh, third straight year in Blacksburg, so I think he grinds it out, finds a way to win, gets everything out of that team. I'm with you. I think they're in. I think they're a bubble team. If you listen to my NC State previous in Wake, I said no. I said they're going to be on the bubbles. I don't think they're going to find their way in. That means someone's got to get those wins. I do trust Mike Young. I, I am more bullish on this team now after previewing it and doing my homework the past couple of days. And I, I'm going to call for them to make the tournament again. Now, I don't know who knows it's once you get in the tournament, it's all about matchups. You never know, you know, like what was it? The year UNBC knocked off Virginia K state ends up in the elite eight because they get UNBC in the second round. So just get in and anything can happen. All right. Uh, yep. I got the Hokies dancing. Ryan's got the Hokies dancing folks subscribe to the college basketball experience. Uh, as we go through a lot of these teams, we're trying to get as many as we can going before the season. Uh, which tips November 7th. Also remember, subscribe to the college football experience. Come on. We're going to be talking West Virginia, Virginia tech game preview. You got to get in over there. Subscribe to the college football experience. Uh, we come together as one on YouTube as the college experience, youtube.com slash college experience. Subscribe, tell a friend, please get over to iTunes. Give us a five-star review people. And remember Ryan, he's doing work. He's doing the Lord's work all over the SGPN, uh, you know, podcast feeds, uh, subscribe to the NFL gambling podcast is he's a, he's a great better when it comes to the NFL uh, subscribe to uh, the NBA gambling podcast. I feel like uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank right now and forgive me. What is the the third podcast that you do on your own? Uh, the Ryan and Russ show. Yes. Subscribe yep. to the Ryan and Russ show people. Absolutely. Fan, fantastic podcast where I think they're, they're covering all sports gambling. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So, so check that out. Uh, you can give him a follow on Twitter folks at uh, right there. Moneyline underscore Mac. As you see it, if you're watching on YouTube, give us a follow uh, the college basketball experiences on Twitter at TCE on SGPN. I'm on Twitter at the Colby D give us all a follow as we trust me when the season tips off every night, we're going to be bringing you uh, what our best plays of the day. We're going to be talking about the marquee matchups going on in college basketball. It is our favorite. So folks, please, Check us out and uh, remember, check out the sports gambling podcast as well. Hop in the discord. If you're a, whether you're a hokey football fan or basketball fan or baseball, great season, by the way, in, in college baseball, hop in the discord. We got channels that are talking those specific sports all the time. So uh, sports gambling podcast.com slash discord. All righty, folks, this is the college basketball experience, Virginia textile. You better start thinking about yours and we out of here.
When we were winning conference titles and going to the Final Four, we were making a statement.